Welcome to this beginner's tutorial of Hostile Architect, a location building app for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. So I figured what I would do is start by showing you guys what you can do with this app. Um, this is um, a map that I created over a few days uh, using the tool. This is a sky bridge. I love this thing. It's between two of these buildings. There's this area right here. And all of this glass in the hospital is this laminated uh, glass that the zombies can't get through. So you can, they can watch you. You can watch them. And then there's some uh, hospital beds and little rooms as well. Uh, there's a rooftop. Let me go over here. Rooftop garden up top here as well, which could be kind of fun as a survivor. You could maybe plant some some food here. I'm gonna go down to the bottom floor. Uh, let's use the stairs and I'll show you what the outside looks like as well of course it's loaded there's so many zombies here at the hospital um, there's kind of this back emergency lane that looks like something's busted through here because um, that doesn't doesn't spawn like that there's bunnies <laughs> I don't think it was them um, let me go I'm gonna gonna jump to uh, so you can see the whole thing here. Uh, I'm going to go to the front, and you can see that's kind of where it links up to the uh, the road there. And there's the front waiting room. I'm going to see if I can find uh, another one, which I made. There it is. Uh, I've also made this uh, tenement apartment, um, which is another uh, fairly large structure. It's an apartment building. Uh, this one's designed to be a little bit more crowded than the ones that are in the game. Uh, you can see there's some apartments. Uh, we're going to go upstairs. Actually, there's a little laundry room right here, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's go upstairs. Over here. Let me find out. Do I have a... I wish I had a flashlight. <laughs> uh, well, you can see this is kind of the size of one of the apartments. They're really quite small. And let the light in um, and there's a lot of them <laughs> and uh, let me hop out there's another one over here I did a cool thing I actually am really proud of with the with some of these rooms here this one so you can jump through you can jump over the balcony which you can't do there's no apartments with balconies in the default apartments uh, so I'm very very proud of that I think that was a really clever idea um, but yeah, this is another, you know, this is a great example of uh, what you can do with this app because part of it is that it just makes it a whole lot faster to create maps. And so, uh, you know, once you get good at it, you can create some really huge maps. Uh, let me see if I can find the third one, which I've added. There it is. So I've also created this medium security prison. Um, let's teleport around. Again, using the same app, you can see there's some vehicles in this one that spawn in this parking lot. Uh, and then here's kind of the entrance to the prison. I'm going to teleport into the lobby here. And uh, I'm going to go a little bit west because I want to go. Here's the cells. So this one's really interesting because there's actually a skylight on the roof and it brings light in uh, to the cell. So it's a really, you know, looking at like those very classic style uh, prisons where you have the the cells off at the side I'm gonna go upstairs because there's you can see here's you know that that style of prison where you have the open atrium with with, uh, with a light coming in at the top and we have a lot of other kind of miscellaneous rooms that have a weight room uh, right here um, and uh, you know, a little reading room there and down here I can get on the roof and I'm going to show you one other spot in the prison is right over this way uh, there's a workshop too um, so this is all kind of you know stuff that you can do you can make this um, with the help of this tool um, I wanted to show you these and you know this was also my way of, of expanding on the tool making sure I use it so that I can figure out what needs to be done with it, what's missing, um, so that I can give really good examples for you guys. 
because uh, I'm hoping that people will be very inspired to create their own maps and they'll invest a lot of their own time into uh, creating maps as well that, that everybody can enjoy. Um, so those are my contributions and um, I'll explain how the app works. This tool is for people who wanted to build their own locations in Cataclysm but don't know where to begin. It's also for people who already know how to add locations but are looking for a faster way to work. With this tool you can make your own houses, stores, and other locations and see them randomly show up in game. Depending on how complicated your map is, I'd say it does maybe 80 to 40 percent of the work. 80 percent if you're just making a basic house. So if you've ever wanted to build your own locations to play through in Cataclysm, this tutorial should unlock that for you. This is the first of two tutorials I'll be making on how to use the Hostile Architect app. In this video, we'll be going from start to finish on making your first location a log cabin. I'm going to walk you through how to use the tool at a beginner level without needing to know how to program. In this one video, we'll go through all the way to the finish line, testing and seeing our house work in game. So let's get started. First, you will download the app from itch.io. You click on this button here, and you'll see this button to donate. You don't have to donate, um, but a couple dollars from a few dozen people really does add up. If you're in a place where you can, and this has some value for you, I'm always grateful for some support, uh, and it does keep the ball rolling. Then once you've downloaded it, I like to put the app in a subfolder within my Cataclysm folder. So I'm going to open up my Cataclysm folder here, and I create a folder called Hostile Architect here. And then I'll paste it right in here. And then you can open it up by clicking on CDDA Hostile Architect.exe. So this is the app, and you can make it full screen. You can uh, let me uh, resize it. You can make it different sizes, which is pretty cool. Um, it's one of the perks of being a Unity app. So along the top, you can see these five buttons. We're on the welcome screen right now, uh, which is the first button. I can click on the painter button to go into the painter. As you can see, it's a blank canvas so far. There are these buttons over here. At the top right, we have 24x, 48x, 72x, and 96x. These are the sizes of map files you can make. I've marked them with beginner, advanced, and expert to help you guys pace yourself as you take on projects. Uh, in this beginner tutorial, we're going to click on 24x. Don't do anything larger. Um, <laughs> because those take extra steps and more things can go wrong. Uh, just click on the 24X for this tutorial here. And uh, you're gonna wanna make sure you get one of these working before you take on anything larger than that. So as soon as I clicked on that, you can see a bunch of these tiles popped up. That's our map right now. It's all just grass. We have some options here like this drop down um, for road connecting. Um, this is the side the road will show up on. Unless you want your house to be like a cabin in the woods, you'll want to set this to a road connection. I'd recommend setting it to the north because that's the standard way to do it. If you do other things, you might have to uh, change some of the file stuff. The next drop down is the region to spawn at. The first option anywhere means literally anywhere. It doesn't need to be in a city. It works with this same option here to mean anywhere along a road. And this doesn't mean it's only going to be on the north side of the road. That just means that's the way, that's the orientation of our map. So if I set it to north, it will still rotate my map in game uh, to place it beside even an east facing or a south facing uh, road. So, um, but if I set it to any of these city options, it's only going to spawn it in a city. You'll want to pick the region that the location you're building is most similar to 
because it'll spawn in that way. Shops and civics will show up in the middle of your city. Uh, meanwhile, houses will normally be, be around the outskirts. Uh, parks will be around the middle, but parks are always spawned a distance away from each other compared to stores and houses which will spawn side by side. You can play around with these to get it to spawn how you like. Um, you can have a house that's in the parks lot. Uh, just know that it's going to prevent a, a actual park from being placed and it's going to replace that instead. The next part of this is painting in the tiles, but we have to build a palette for that. So here's the next step. Click on this palette tab at the top and we'll go over to the palette screen. This is where you set up palettes. Since this is a beginner tutorial, I'm not going to go over a lot of palette stuff. That'll be in the advanced tutorial. But what we're going to do for this, for you, is import an existing palette from the Cataclysm base game. So I want you to go to your Cataclysm folder and navigate to Data, JSON, MapGen Palettes. Then we're going to open up this one called Cabin. You can try out other ones later, but Cabin is a nice, simple one for your first house. Press Control A, then Control C to copy everything from this file. Some palette files have multiple palettes, but this one just has one, so we can copy everything in the file. Then go back to the app, click on this area here that says Paste JSON here for Import, and paste it. Then click on Import Palette, and you can see a bunch of tiles popped up. They're all color-coded, so when we import them, they'll show us different colors to help you figure out what's what. Um, you can also edit palettes, but I'm not going to show you that in the beginner tutorial. We're going to go right back to the Painter tab. Now, at the right side, you can see all of those tiles. There's our palette. If we click on them, for instance, I'll click on this one here, uh, you can see what it is. It's going to show you the terrain. If I click on another one, let's click on one of these gray ones, uh, it says that there's no terrain, so it's going to be the default terrain, uh, as well as a furniture, which is, it says it's a desk. I'll click on this hashtag and it tells me that's a terrain wall log. It's a log wall. That's exactly what we need to start building a house. So I always start by laying out the shape of the building using walls. After that, you can fill it in, but just get a sense for what your building is going to be on the map tile. Then I'll split up my building uh, by adding some more walls to it. Now let's do doors. I'm going to click on these one of these brown ones. Those will be doors, and for this one, it looks like they're the same. They may not actually be the same though. I'm going to open up the palette and look for that icon. So the plus, it says it's either going to be a door closed or a door locked. And this three means that it's three times more likely to be a closed door than a locked door. So it gives it a rare chance of being a locked door as opposed to the equals, which is always just going to be an unlocked closed door. So what I'll do is I'll make the plus, that's going to be my front door, and then the equals are going to be my interior doors. They don't have to lock. Next, let's fill in the floor. All of these gray ones are floors, but they also have various furniture on them. I want to find a floor that has no furniture, and it looks like the eye doesn't have any furniture. Ignore this chance thing that's probably a bug to do with importing palettes. So I'm going to fill in my ground and rather than it being the grass, I'm going to make it floor.
that looks pretty good so far. I could go ahead and add furniture too, but I think it's a good idea to get it in-game before I go any further. The more frequently you test, the less bugs you'll have to work through all at once. So I say get it into the game sooner rather than later. We can come back and fix furniture later once we're sure the map works. So we're going to go over to the export tab and on the left of here I have instructions for what you need to do to export and test your map. I'm going to go ahead and type in all the fields in this top area. I don't have to worry about this bottom area. That will be filled in by the app when I click on export. So the first one here is the mod identifier. This is how the game will internally refer to my house. You don't see this name in game, so make it something unique that won't match anything else. I'm going to go TC uh, demo house one. Uh, mod name, this is actually what your mod will be called in the menu. I'm going to call mine TC Demo House 1. Author name, I'm going to put my name in there. Description, I'm going to go add to cabin. Location ID, this is what the game will refer to your location as internally. Again, that's not seen by players in game, so I'll call it TC Demo House 1. Palette ID, since we imported that cabin palette, it's pre-filled that in for us. We can check off imported palette, so make sure that's checked. Location name, this is what players will see in game, so I'm going to call mine Roadside Cabin. Then we click on Export JSON, and when we click that, did you notice these brackets popped up? That's the code for our map. We're almost in game now. We just need to copy the code and put it into local files so that we have a copy of our map within our Cataclysm folders. I want you to open up your Cataclysm folder again and go to Data, Mods, and I want you to create a new folder and you name it after whatever you put in your mod identifier. So I'm going to call mine TC Demo House 1. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. This is just to make it easy to find. Then inside your mod folder, create a new text document and call it modinfo.json. And make sure you change the file extension. Now go back into the app and copy everything in this field by pressing Control A, Control C, and now go to your text document, open this up, and paste that in. You should see something like this. In the advanced tutorial, I'll explain a bit more about what this stuff means and how you can edit these files directly, but for beginners, we're going to skip that. So that's good. We're going to close this file. Now we're going to create a second file, another text document. We're going to call this one after the location. So our location is TC Demo House 1 underscore map.json and get rid of that txt file extension. Open this one and we're going to copy this one into the file. And it should look a lot like that. You can actually see your map here. The bottom one is the roof, but as a beginner, all you really want to do is just make sure that the shape of your house, uh, just put these dots wherever you want your roof to be and put the empty space, basically just hit your space bar, uh, wherever you want to be open air. So I want to have roof on top of all of my stuff, and it, it looks like that's what the app generated for me. You might see a little bit different if you put like um, a fence. You're gonna have to come into your roof and make sure that you have open air where there's supposed to be air. You don't wanna have a roof on top of your fence. So let's save that and we're gonna close it. Now we're gonna make another one. Now the next field here is actually for palette exporting. But since we checked off that we're using an existing base game palette, it's not gonna have us create a palette file for us. So we can skip that box. The next one we want is the overmap terrain. So I'm going to copy the overmap terrain 
I'm going to go over here to my mod folder. I'm going to create a new text document and I'm going to call it overmap terrain.json. I'm going to open it and paste in my overmap. I'll take a second to explain a couple things in this because you may want to change one or two tiny things. This details how your location will show up on the world map. The two things that you're going to want to change for this tutorial is the symbol and the color. So I want you to set it to your I want you to set your symbol to a C on both your roof and your cabin. And on the color, I want you to change that to yellow. And that'll make it easier to find while we're testing. So let's save that file and then let's go on to the next one. We're going to copy this one and create a new text document. This one's going to be called overmap underscore specials dot json and paste it in there. Okay, so now we have our files. We can go ahead and launch Cataclysm now. So I'm going to go back to Cataclysm and I'm going to actually launch the game. The first thing we need to do is we need to create a new world. So I'm going to create a world and I want to look for my mod, which is right here, TC Demo House 1. I always think it's something special to see your mod show up here for the first time. It's the first indication that you've done something to actually change the game. If you see your name here, congratulations. The easy part's over. Uh, make sure you press enter so that you can see it over here on the right column. And then we're going to finalize world. I'm going to call it test world zero. Call it something like that. I like to put numbers because you will have to create a new world almost every time you want to test a change. We're going to create that. Now we're going to go to new game. I'm going to choose a preset character and I'm going to choose the world, test world zero. Using a preset character is the fastest way to get in. And here we go. So if it's going to crash due to any errors in the files, this will be the time. What it does there is it checks through each of them for programming errors. And if it finds any, it's going to give us a log of what happened, which will help us solve the problem. So this is now we're going to go and open up that file and figure out what went wrong with it. So I'm going to go back into data, mods, demo house one. And so it's telling me the overmap specials has a missing comma. So I'm going to open up overmap specials and I'm going to try and figure out where it is. So it says that it's after this occurrences. So if I go comma enter, I actually, it looks like I have to delete a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to delete everything up to here and we're going to save it. And let's see if that works. So I'm going to close Cataclysm, open it up again, and let's start a new game. Okay, so it found another thing. Uh, it says Furniture I has no terrain, furniture, or other definition. So we're going to take a look here. So I want you to go back into data, mods, open up your demo house, and let's open up the map. So I is supposed to be the floor. So what I'm going to do is take your terrain area and we're going to define I. So come in here and type I and then call it T underscore floor. So make sure it's formatted just like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to tell it, if you see an I, that's floor. And then make sure we close Cataclysm and start it back up. And so if you get to the character creation, 
that means that it was able to get through without finding any problems. Um, we're just going to go right through character creation, and now we're in game. Um, now we have to go hunting for our cabin. Uh, the easiest way to do this is if you bind the debug key, the debug menu, to something. I have mine bound to spacebar because it's easy to press. So bind your debug key to something, and then press the debug key, go to map, reveal map, and it will reveal your world map to you. Now go to teleport long range, and we're going to look for C. You can see C everywhere, right? There's a C here, there's a C there, there's tons of C's. And the reason why there's so many is because if I go to my overmap specials file, uh, you can see the occurrences is currently set to 100, 100, which means there's going to be at least 100 of these cabins in every overmap uh tile <laughs> which means there's a lot of them um, when you're done testing you're gonna want to change this I would say you want to set it to zero to maybe five to see up to five uh, repetitions of your cabin within one overmap tile uh, but the the reason why we're seeing so many is because we want to test them right we want to see and make sure they work and so um, only after you've tested you're gonna want to reduce the frequency so now, what I'm going to do is I hit spacebar, teleport, long range, and I'm going to go right beside my cabin. And you can see it right there. There's our house. We created this thing. Now it's in game. And of course the door's locked. Um, I can teleport short range to go in. And you can see there it is. It's, there's the log walls, here's the doors. It's exactly like we set up. So I made sure it works, I tested it, I was able to see it in game. And now um, we can go back and make any other changes we want to improve it further. So I'm gonna close Cataclysm now and we're gonna go back to the app. We can go right back into Painter and add stuff in. So I'm gonna go and add beds, which is the capital B. I'm gonna add a bed over here, let's say one over there. Um, let's grab a window too, this W uh, is a window, so we're gonna add a few of these around. And then let's see what else. Let's put a water pump outside. Bridge there, a sofa, a sink, let's put a table, there we go, there's tons of stuff. And then now, what I want to do is I want to go back to export, click on export JSON again, and copy this map JSON, I want to copy that right into my map JSON file and just paste it right over and you can see here it ended up putting a roof on top of my water pump I put outside so I'm just going to replace that with a space for open air so there won't be a roof there and so I'm going to save it I'm going to load up Cataclysm again we're going to go new game preset and since it's still at zero here that means that um, when I create this character, it's going to build the world from fresh. So I don't need to create a new world as long as this says zero. But if it says one, I have to create a new world. Otherwise, it's going to have the old version of the map. So if you update your map, you need to create a new world uh, if you see anything other than zero. So over here, uh, oh right, so because we defined I as being floor, we have to define it as being floor again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up 
the mod demo house, the map, and I'm going to make sure I add that in. So we want it to be I, want to be T floor, and save that. And we're going to reboot. Let's teleport over to one of these cabins. And now we can see it has the windows. And it has some furniture inside. Here's our water pump. And that's looking pretty good. So that's going to conclude the beginner tutorial for Hostile Architect. I hope this worked for you and you were able to successfully make a house show up in game. There might have been some editing to the JSON file that you have to do, um, but it's a good way to learn JSON and the log does tell you what you need to do. It'll tell you if you're missing a comma or anything like that. So it's a good way to practice. You can do a lot with just this knowledge, but in the advanced tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do monster and vehicle placements, item placements, and multi-story buildings. So keep an eye out for that. I'll hopefully have that up in a few days. So take care, be well, and enjoy making maps for Cataclysm.